Steve, um, your British marathon record has stood for 29 years now. Kind of when you look back on that day when you broke the record, kind of what's the number one memory that comes flooding back? Um, Carl Thacker dropping out for four miles, running the street into the hotel and leaving the hotel. Um, it was, you know, every now and again you, you remember part of it that you've already forgotten or you hadn't re even realised happened. You know, it, it's, it was, it went perfect to plan. That's exactly how I was, I was going to run. Not necessarily that path, but the way I ran the race and, and winning the race was exactly how I did. So to, to do that and um, execute a plan doesn't happen very often, whether it's a 1500 or a marathon, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, I was just lucky again. Yeah. And you almost, some would probably say you went out like a bit of a madman. Yeah. Was that always in the plan? Um, I was going to put it uh, out of reach. No doubt about it, I wanted to be. He, even though I had the world record from the year before, I'd lost it obviously, but he was still the guy we were focusing on. He was, he was the guy that, um, that was, the build up was all about in the, the race, um, and I was just a bit of an afterthought. There's nothing they meant to do that, it's just that Rob was the biggest star. Because I broke his world record. Um, so I just wanted to beat Rob. And the only way to beat Rob is to dominate. Otherwise, because he was as strong as an ox, otherwise he'd just hang out. I didn't want to leave it to chance, so off I went. And the distance had no fear for me. It was, it, it was about running as fast as I could, not trying to gauge my effort from to 5k to 10k to 15k. It was about running as fast as I could from the start to the finish. And uh, do you think, looking at this year's race, do you think Mo has to go in with a similar attitude? I, I would be disappointed in him if he didn't have that. I'd be disappointed in his coach, and I know his coach very well, and, and his, his philosophy. Uh, uh, I'm always not on that starting line, as, as with any doubts about what he has to do. Uh, he's going to go down in the record books as the greatest decision runner ever did. Um, you don't you don't run a marathon to see what it feels like. You don't you're not there to see if you can break a British record, which is which, which is pedestrian compared to what's being run these days. You're there because you want to beat you want to break the world record. You want to beat these guys. And sometimes, it, okay, if you run 210 and one, it wouldn't be so bad. You know, but he has to put it out of reach. He has to he has to go for it and, and make him suffer. And not just run around and run around and run around. Until everybody's dropped off, because three guys won't drop off, and then it's a, then it's a battle, um, and you put yourself at risk. He should be on the start line. I know what I got to do. I know, I know what I need to do to win. I'm going to execute. Thanks. Okay.